Welcome to the CFA Society San Francisco podcast, where we interview and discuss current topics with leading members of the Bay Area investment community. For this special edition of the podcast, Tanya Subatang, Membership Manager with CFA Society San Francisco, sits down with Society President Joyce Lee, Society Treasurer Jane Leung, and Society CEO Ann O'Brien to discuss leadership of the society and the pandemic's impact on their personal and professional lives. Hello, everyone. I am so excited for this very special podcast because with me today, I have three COFA Society San Francisco leaders, Joyce Lee, Jane Lang, and Ann O'Brien. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. I'd love for our listeners to get to you know a little bit more. So let's go around and have you introduce yourself. Tell us your role with CFA Society San Francisco and how long you've been with the society. Um, Joyce, let's have you go first. I'm happy to. I'm a portfolio manager and co-chair of diversity and inclusion at Matthews Asia. It's a independent Asian investment specialist firm headquartered right here in San Francisco. I joined the board of CFA Society San Francisco in 2016 and have taken up a few different roles on the board over the past five years. My current role is the president of the board. Thanks, Joyce. Jane, why don't you go up next? Great. Thanks, Tanya. Yeah, I'm Jane Leung, and I've been with Silicon Valley Bank for about 18 months. I'm their chief investment officer, and I am the treasurer at the CFA Society board, and I'm also chair of the finance committee, and I've been uh, there for about four years now. Awesome. And Anne? Thank you, Tanya. I have been with CFA Society of San Francisco for almost exactly five years now as the chief executive officer. It's been a very interesting five years, shepherding the society, working on initiatives for our members, working collaboratively with other Western region societies and with Excel societies around the world. Thank you, ladies. So jumping right in, it's no secret that since COVID-19 pandemic lockdown, many companies had had to, out of necessity, cities really pivot their strategies to keep operating. What has the society done and how has it adapted since the beginning of lockdown? And I'm going to have you answer that first if you can. <laughs> sure. Yes. March 15th, almost a year and a half ago now is when we shut the office. So I have to give really full credit to the staff, to Eric Geedy, to yourself, Tanya, to Lindsay for being super innovative and being able to pivot. Within three weeks, Lindsay had us all set up up with new computers, all networked in, ready to go. Everybody taught themselves to varying degrees of expertise, Zoom and how to create compelling events. We reached out to members in new ways because all of our lives were so dramatically impacted. So we started offering content and events that were the full scope of our lives, whether it was helping parents who suddenly found themselves at home with children, teaching them, watching them, tearing their hair out with them, or finding local heroes in our communities who were doing amazing work to help people in need during the early days of the pandemic. So it was a challenging time, but it was also very energizing. We were fortunate in that our membership responded well. We were able to have members become engaged with us who hadn't been engaged before, who re-upped their engagement, who supported us. It's been very, very uplifting in so many ways. But I say that our key strengths were being able to be nimble, agile, and innovative. Mm -hmm. Enjoy any thoughts on that? Absolutely in agreement with what Anne has said. It's a year of trial and error. We learn from our successes and also some of the not so successful <laughs> programmings. But it's always uh, fascinating to see how agile the society under Anne's leadership has become. And as a board, at that time, I was vice president of the board. I witnessed how supportive and strategic the board stayed during the whole year. We are open-minded about all the changes and, and staff implemented. And at the same time, we ask strategically important questions to make sure our financial health is solid. And also we stay true to our long-term strategic goals to deliver membership value. That's awesome. So obviously, personally, as well as Anne mentioned earlier, we've all had to kind of adjust and adapt our lifestyle due to the pandemic. You know, parents becoming teachers, transitioning to work from home. I'd love to hear how each of you adapted to the pandemic personally. Jane, why don't we start with you? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say it has been a, a really interesting, you know, past year plus of the pandemic. And I would say for me, 
you know, thinking about how I've had to adapt personally, I guess I think about how I have been. And basically, when I was younger, I think I was way more kind of attached to being in real control of things, really getting <laughs> to a schedule, you know, having everything just buttoned down just so and then nothing really changing from the plan. And I will say that, you know, the uh, what we saw over the last 18 months plus is really kind of tested that. And for me, I I really watched myself become so much more adaptable and flexible Mm -hmm. um, and just really, really able to kind of roll with the flow. I think, you know, it's it's not surprising because I think as you get older, you do develop a a better sense of balance and perspective. Mm-hmm. But I would say that I notice it even more so, you know, in, in my personal life and in the last 18 months. I mean, I, I actually just moved um, homes personally and uh, the closing of the whole transaction was two months delayed for no good reason whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and it was just one of these things where you just kind of had to go with it and make the best of it. And I feel like that's really what all of us are having to do and have had to do over the past 12 to 18 months. And, and I think, you know, I've also seen myself being a lot more open to new Mm -hmm. ideas and being really, really reflective about kind of what's important to me um, and what's important for my family. And I think what I've seen, observed with our clients, with my friends and and just people that I've come across is that people are are becoming to think more about, you know, what what is really important in life because the pandemic really surprised, I would say, all of us and we weren't (laughs) Mm -hmm. expecting it. And it's really changed our lives incredibly and probably forever. Because if I think about even going forward, the business norms and will we Mm -hmm. ever be back fully to a full in-person kind of life. Well, maybe, but probably not anytime soon. And so I think, you know, being really adaptable and flexible and becoming even more so has been what I've noticed is a real personal adaptation for the past uh, past 18 months or so. Yeah, I think a lot of us can resonate with that being, you know, forced into being more flexible and adaptable. But I think that also probably exercise attributes we didn't think we could. So I think that's a big win. Well, Joyce, I'd love to hear how you've personally adapted since then? I wish you could see my house right now. I set up an <laughs> obstacle, obstacle course for, uh, to prevent my puppy to come into the room uh, whenever I have the webcast or a podcast like this. It's one of the things that um, Jane mentioned, sort of like little adaptations every day. The open-mindedness, I think, is the key word here. I completely agree with what Jane has mentioned. And I feel like the best practice, this as a word, sort of got thrown out of my dictionary for since last year. And there's no best practice of anything. Um, mm-hmm. You have to rethink and really challenge the status quo, the way of doing things, and really think about what could be a new way of mm-hmm. doing things. And for example, for my work, I used to travel a lot to Asia to research companies. Now every evening we have these video, audio calls. It's almost like a mini conference uh, every mm-hmm. week. And that really helped me to think, what is the best approach to do fundamental equity research even when the life goes back to normal? Would Mm -hmm. that be a hybrid model for me Mm -hmm. to do the research going forward? Of course, not all these experiments are successful. For example, (laughs) I decided to challenge my uh, assumption that I'm really bad at gardening uh, and it turned out to be that was absolutely the right (laughs) assumption. (laughs) So, well, um, I'll continue to be open-minded going forward forward and I hope to bring some of that mindset also to my volunteer work on the board. You know, I love hearing these such positive outcomes, right? Because for so long, we've been hearing so many sad and negative stories. And with the stories you've shared and hearing how you guys discovered new ways to be more efficient and being more open minded. I actually love to hear more positive and successful experiences you guys had in the past 18 months. Jane, I'm going to bring it back to you again. And I'd love to hear more about your your new discoveries. Sure. Yeah, great. And that's what I'm saying. Like, there's been a lot. <laughs> 
I think probably for all of us over the 18 months, I think first and foremost, I mean, from a professional side, I think some of the positive um, experiences that I felt was really being able to help our clients and, you know, our staff at work really navigate the kind of craziness and particularly uncertainties in the market. Given I spend, I spend my whole entire career you know, in investments in the markets and have seen a lot of different cycles, I think it was really great to be able to share my perspective over the past kind of years of my life and career to help people see how, you know, though unexpected and big, you know, that this pandemic is not kind of the end of the world and, mm. and that we will get through this. And if you look historically at markets and, and, and through all the different types of world wars and political things and health crises, we still manage to come up ahead and, and we'll be fine. But I think, you know, there's just a lot that we have to get through and it's hard to know that when you're sitting in the middle of it, mm-hmm. but that it really is just kind of a blip. And so that's been really rewarding. And I think a positive outcome to uh, the, the past kind of 18 months that I've, I've been experiencing. Um, I'd also say that, and I think a lot of us see this, is just being able to kind of slow down, and spend more time with family um, has been something that I certainly wasn't expecting, but have really, really enjoyed and, and count as a positive silver lining to all of this. My family spent a lot of time in the desert in Palm Springs over the past uh, year. And I think it's... It's just, you know, it's very deserted, very zen. And I think we just got a a real appreciation for nature that we actually never had before because we were always flying around and very active, like just on planes Mm -hmm. and doing things that were not really tied to nature. But given, you know, the pandemic and the kind of the the need to kind of be socially distanced, uh, (laughs) nature is a great place to be. And I found that I really enjoy that, even though I didn't really expect that because I've never really been an outdoorsy person. And Mm -hmm. so who knew? I guess I, I, I am. And uh, I think, you know, it's, it's been really cool because I mean, through that, through our long walks in the desert, I've also been able to kind of have some really deep conversations with mm. our son who is nine years old, uh, going on 40. Uh, he's very, very thoughtful and introspective. And I had no idea because I was normally kind of flying around traveling all the time. And, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, adapting like we've been talking about today and, and mm-hmm. changes. And, you know, he had actually asked me when some friends of ours had unexpectedly, partly due to the pandemic, in fact, fully due to the pandemic, moved to Singapore for the, the for the year. Mm-hmm. And he had, he had spent the six months with them uh, in the desert and was wondering, like, you know, mommy, what happens when they come back? You know, what if they're different? And mm-hmm. it was a good opportunity to say, yeah, they'll be different. We'll all, we'll be different because we all, you know, have different experiences, but, you know, they'll, they enrich us and they make us better people. And then when we come back together, we'll have new experiences experiences together. And it was really cool to have a talk like that. Because if I think about whether or not we would have had that talk, if not for the pandemic, and if not for just kind of walking around in the desert, (laughs) um, I would probably say I I don't, I probably we wouldn't have. Um, So I think that to me, has also been a a really positive experience. And I guess last and kind of on a funny note, I I, I think um, I really enjoyed honing a lot of skills. So unlike, you know, Joyce, I'm sorry about your gardening skills, but, (laughs) but actually I've been honing my cooking skills, which I will say, I, I'll toot my own horn, they're not bad already, but I've been like, you know, making pizza in the pizza oven. I did the whole starter thing. I've been really kind of perfecting things because I had the time. And mm-hmm. I, I I just think that's been a real positive silver lining. That's, I think that's great. And as a parent myself, the fact that you have that time with your son that you mentioned that you normally wouldn't have had, I think is one of those big upsides that we saw from this pandemic. Joyce, what have you experienced about positive specifically during uh, these past 18 months. Absolutely. I really enjoyed the diversity of programs we have been able to put together at the society. Maybe because everyone like Jane, uh, as busy as Jane, will have a little bit more time. So we are able to get a wide range of speakers from the past Fed president, you know, the uh, thought leaders in finance industry and other industries and even uh, cryptocurrency, um, blockchain, and we even put together a career fair. So it's fantastic to see the variety. Uh, at the same time, I also enjoyed the magic of Zoom. I, I, I can't believe I say that now, but <laughs> <laughs> but one, one event I particularly enjoyed was the Women in uh, Venture Capital event featuring Erica Kramer from How Women Invest, hosted by our outstanding volunteer and leader and co-chair of Impact Committee, which is a volunteer committee, Arinuka Kuma. I at that event really realized 
that once you have a topic that both speakers and an audience are passionate about, and when it's carefully and skillfully created and moderated, it can feel so intimate and engaging. So that was really a surprise for me and really challenged my thinking about what is the best approach to deliver programs. Of course, this approach will evolve over time. I now, um, 18 months after the pandemic, I really want to have some small in-person interactions as well. So I, I, I believe our society is also uh, doing some events in person and virtually, and maybe eventually we'll have hybrid events. Uh, who knows? But this is really the exciting part for, for me. It's almost like opportunity cost for going to event is so much easier than before. And also you can be open-minded and satisfy your open-mindedness by really diving into these events. So my ask here to our audience uh, on this podcast is to check back often. Uh, check back in to our web- website to see what really interesting events and topics our volunteers and staff are putting together now and also volunteer and engage with us. And these events, remember, are created for you. Insights from these programs and engagement feedback will be used to drive our future programming. So you, we all play a part in it. Uh, come back and enjoy our programming. That's my uh, shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Joyce. And yes, if for our listeners, check out our website. We have some great programming definitely coming up for the new year. So I'm excited to share that. And they're always welcome to let us know what they're interested to. And I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add to maybe a positive story you had. (laughs) Sure. I'll I'll share one positive personally and one professionally, if I might. Um, Yeah. I, I have a very elderly father. And in my regular life, I would never have been able to spend this much time with him. And he needs a lot of care. So it's been nice to be able, because as I am right now, I'm at his house doing this, you know, and that's been a treasure in terms of family life. And then professionally, I think that you asked for a, a success story. I think the Western region societies coming together to share ideas, share content, share speakers, collaborate on revenue, on sponsorship, whatever it might need, has been one of the most delightful outcomes of the pandemic because that has enabled us to bring speakers like Ben Bernanke. It has enabled us to bring speakers like David Rubenstein and share that widely with lots of different people, which hopefully enriches our whole community. That is such a great reminder to everybody how really the pandemic has brought all of us together one way. And that's a great lesson I hope we all keep through. And that includes professionally speaking as well as family. So with that, and I know where, you know, you all have busy afternoons. I'd love to ask you guys one more question. But with obviously the COVID-19 pandemic still going on, because I think we've all hoped that by this point, the threat of it would have lessened and we've all be doing this podcast in person. How do you see the society responding and adapting to the uncertainty of the future ahead of us? Joyce, do you want to take that one? Sure. The only certainty, I would say, is uncertainty. (laughs) We we have to be flexible on how we deliver events, how we deliver content, how we innovate. And just to meet our ever-changing dynamic uh, members' need. And we must involve and ask, and this is actually a, a perfect time to ask that question. What are we still not doing that we should be doing with strong uh, financial position and robust uh, technology and talent infrastructure in place in the society. We are positioned to experiment with ideas that can be better in the new environment to deliver our member value. And at the same time, the I said it in my last address to the membership, the key word for this year is connect. We want to connect our members with our high quality content, innovative programming, and socially impactful initiatives. We want to connect the society to key stakeholders uh, and industry alliances. Our board stay very strategic but at the same time, highly engaged in navigating this environment in support of the staff under the leadership of Ed. With that, why don't I hand it over to Ed to talk mm-hmm. about <laughs> specific mm-hmm. about strategies to navigate in the future? 
Yes, I thank you, Joyce. I, I think now a year and a half in and with the variants arising, we have another interesting, uncertain year. And so I think some of the things we'll be doing and we're planning on doing, as both Jane and Joyce said, plans are sometimes needing to be changed, is navigating how to stay interesting in the virtual world. How do we mm. get past Zoom fatigue? Uh, what do we do to still engage members virtually? How do we move into that hybrid world? And we've got a couple of our first in-person events coming up. That's a test for us. We'll see how that goes. So it's, again, kind of as Joyce was saying, it's launching an idea, testing it, seeing how it goes, and asking. I love that question, how Joyce phrases it. What are we not doing that we could be doing to better serve our members? Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be doing more personal tests. Bringing Tanya on board as our membership director has really helped with that. I mean, um, not to embarrass you, but Tanya <laughs> reaches out to new members personally to talk to them. She reaches out to candidates. So we have more personal touch than ever. In fact, <laughs> we even talked the board into writing personal notes to all new charter holders this year as a personal welcome. And we liked it so much, we're going to continue it every year. So I really think enjoyed it. Be, <laughs> good. <laughs> there will be more of that personal relationship uh, building and checking in in addition to remaining strategic. We'll be seeing some changes though. We're relooking at where we're located, right? No mm -hmm. one really needs a long lease anymore. So we're going to be investigating options for that. We've got now a fully remote staff. How does that work when we do come back to live? So we're, we'll just be in this space of we're open to, to whatever comes and we will succeed where we can and where we fail, we will admit our mistake and go on. Well, Dan, thank you. And I think our listeners are very excited to know all the things that we have in store for them and to kind of keep a look out of all the new innovative ways for us all to connect, as Joy said. Now, I want to ask you all one more question, and I'd love for each of you to ask, but what are you most looking forward to, whether it's in the month or six months or a year, just personally for you? About you, Jane, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, well, honestly, I'm, I'm really looking forward to finally becoming settled in my new house. I mean, that's just <laughs> that's awesome. We literally moved in last Saturday and I'm still in a million boxes, but I think hopefully within a month or so, we should be able to just kind of, uh, you know, go forward and, and hopefully, you know, ride out the rest of this pandemic. Well, awesome. And of so course, Joyce. Me, yeah, for me, Jane, I really look forward to tasting your new skill of cooking. <laughs> That's right. You'll have Thanks to cook much. for us. Yes, I will. <laughs> Thank you all so much. This is a very, very special podcast. I'm so thrilled to be able to sit down and chat with you ladies. So I just want to thank you again. And to our listeners, keep a lookout for all the exciting new things we have for you. Until next time. Thank you all. Thank you for listening to this special edition of the CFA Society San Francisco podcast. We hope you enjoyed the engaging discussion. Please stay tuned for more episodes of this podcast featured every fourth Tuesday in our weekly newsletters and through the CFA Society San Francisco podcast channel available through most major podcast apps.